I am teaching you farmer languages and automata theory. For this farmer languages and automata theory, I am giving brief introduction. Automata theory is a study of abstract computing devices or machines. Abstract computing devices means theoretical model of computer hardware or software. Before there were computers in the 1930s, a Turing studied an abstract machine that had all the capabilities of today's computers, at least as far as in what they could complete. Turing's goal was to describe precisely the boundary between what a computing machine what could do and what it could not do. His conclusions applied not only to his abstract Turing machines but today's real machines. In the 1940s and 1950s, simpler kinds of machines which we today call finite automata were studied by a number of researchers. These automata originally proposed to model brain function turned out to be extremely useful for a variety of other purposes. The late 1950s, the linguistic N. Chomsky a began study of formal grammars. While not strictly machines, these grammars have close relationships to abstract automata and serve today as the basis of some important software components, including parts of compilers. In 1969, Ace Cook extended Turing's study of what could and what could not be computed. Cook was able to separate those problems that can be solved efficiently by computer from those problems that can in principle be solved. But in practice, it takes so much time that computers are useless for all but very small instances of the problem. The latter class of problems is called intractable or NP-hard. It is highly unlikely that even the exponential improvement in computing speed that computer hardware has been following will have significant impact on our ability to solve large instances of intractable problems. All of these theoretical developments bear directly on what computer scientists do today. Some of the concepts like finite automata and certain kinds of formal grammars are used in the design and construction of important kinds of software. Other concepts like Turing machine help us understand what can we expect from our software. Especially the theory of intractable problems lets us deduce whether we are likely to be able to meet a problem head on and write a program to solve it or whether we have to find some way to work around that intractable problem. Find an approximation, use a heuristic or use some other method to limit the amount of time the program will spend solving the problem. Why study automata theory? There are several reasons why the study of automata and complexity is an important part of the core of computer science. Introduction to finite automata. Finite automata are useful model for many important kinds of hardware and software. We shall see examples of how the concepts are used. For the moment, let us just list some of the most important kinds. The first one, software for designing and checking the behavior of digital circuits. Second one, the lexical analyzer of a typical compiler that is the compiler component that breaks the input text into logical units such as identifiers, keywords and punctuation. Third one, software for scanning large bodies of text such as collections of web pages to find occurrences of words phrases or other patterns. Software for verifying systems of all types that have a finite number of distinct states such as communications, protocols or protocols for secure exchange of information. Let us begin our informal introduction with a sketch of what a finite automaton is and does. There are many systems or components such as those enumerated above that may be viewed as being at all times in one of a finite number of states. The purpose of this state is to remember the relevant portion of the system's history. Since there are only a finite number of states, the entire history generally cannot be remembered. So the system must be designed carefully to remember what is important and forget what is not. The advantage of having only a finite number of states is that we can implement the system with a fixed set of resources. For example, we could implement it in hardware as a circuit or as a simple form of program that can make decisions 
looking only at a limited amount of data or using the portion in the code itself to make the decision. Let us take one example. The simplest non-trivial finite automaton is an on or off switch. The device remembers whether it is in the on state or the off state and it allows the users to press a button whose effect is different depending on the state of the switch. That is, if the switch is in the off state, then pressing the button changes it to the on state and if the switch is in the on state, then pressing the same button turns it to the half state. The finite automaton model for the switch is shown in the diagram you can uh, see in the screen. As for all finite automata, the states are represented by circles. In this example, we have named the states on and half. Arcs between states are labeled by inputs which represent external influence on the system. Here, both arcs are labeled by the input push which represents a user pushing the button. The intent of the two arcs is that whichever state the system is in, when the push input is received, it goes to the other state. One of the states is designated the start state, the state in which the system is placed initially. In our example, the start state is half and we conventionally indicate the start state by the word start and an arrow leading to that state. It is often necessary to indicate one or more state, one or more states as final or accepting states. Entering one of these states after the sequence of inputs indicates that the input sequence is good in some way. For instance, we could have regarded the state on as accepting because in that state, the device being controlled by the switch will operate. It is conventional to designate accepting states by a double circle, although we have not made any such designation in the diagram. Let us take an example too. Sometimes what is remembered by a state can be much more complex than an off or than an on or off choice. In this diagram, it shows that uh, another finite automaton that could be part of a lexical analyzer. The job of this automaton is to recognize the keyword then. It needs five states, each of which represents a different position in the word. Then that has been reached so far. These positions correspond to the prefixes of the word ranging from the empty string to the complete word. In the diagram, you can see the five states are named by the prefix of then seen so far. Inputs correspond to letters. We may imagine that lexical analyzer examines one character of the program that it is compiling at a time. And the next character to be examined is the input to the automaton. The start state corresponds to the empty string and each state has a transition and the next letter of then to the state that corresponds to the next larger prefix. The state named then is entered when the input has spelled the word then. Since it is the job of this automaton to recognize when then has been seen, we could consider that state the lone accepting state. Structural representation this topic will see in the next class.